Hi everyone. Welcome to Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. My name is Ani. And before we get started, I would appreciate if you all would give me a thumbs up, a like on this channel. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Smash it. And press that notification bell. Turn that on so you can be notified every time I upload another one of my amazing recipes. Guarantee you'll like it. Now in my kitchen, as it is titled Creative Cooking, we get creative in here. So you don't necessarily have to follow my recipe. You can get creative and add or take away, you know, what you would desire to put in or take out. And according to your taste and liking. That's the fun about this channel is that we get in here, we start getting creative. Creative, you, it's nothing new or outside of the norm to see me start off with certain ingredients and all of a sudden add some or change my mind on some. It's, it's creative cooking. And we all learn from one another. We learn to adapt to new tastes. You know, we get out there and we try something new sometimes. You know, we, we, uh, ramp up or vamp up as I would like to say the uh, uh, old recipes you know that's always fun to do you know give it a good twist but anyway today I'm going to bring you um, my take on chicken and dumplings instead of the flour and water type of dumplings you know I'm going to use gnocchi okay now I do have a video um, on my channel that shows you how to make potato and flour gnocchis. So go ahead and look that up and make you some, you know, freeze them up or use them fresh with this recipe that I'm about to show you right here. So this is going to be a cheesy type of a chi chicken and gnocchi and potato dumpling. Okay. And it's going to have very little bits of chopped celery and carrots I mean little tiny pieces only because it gives it good coloring you know instead of just that plain old uh, dull just creamy looking uh, kind of recipe it just adds color to it okay so follow me I am going to go ahead and mise my station which means prepare and I'll be right back Okay, guys, here we go. I'm going to not, well, I'm going to try not to use any kind of flour in this. I'm going to try to use, uh, just do it all naturally. We shall see how that works out. And I'm getting my onion here. Because I do have a little bit of onion. going to start this. I'm getting my cheese too. Okay, I have my chicken here. Now these are chicken legs because I didn't have anything else. So what I did was I cut them up and diced them up. Um, I am going to get a glove so I can season them with a little bit of adobo. I always try to incorporate, since I am Puerto Rican, I always try to incorporate Spanish herb spices or something into my cooking only because I can't get away from the flavor. I just love it. I grew up with it and uh, it's fantastic. So I am, I did wash this out. So I am going to incorporate some adobo for seasoning on that. And that's Goya adobo. And it's the one with the red cap. It's the one I like um, because it does contains this as with pepper con pimienta that's pepper so and that's about the only time i'll ever really use pepper is mixed in with the adobo all right so i've got that all mixed up in there all right and i have a little bit of lemon i'm going to want to squeeze In there as well. Okay. 
Okay. So lemon wedge. I usually use them for my water. Okay. So we have our chicken. We have these are the little pieces of I have a fly around here and I'm going to get it eventually. Well, these are the little pieces of carrots and celery. Now the celery is a little bit bigger than the carrots. The carrots I want it real small. I don't want big chunks in there. Here are my sliced potatoes and I also have some cooked potatoes in with um, about a half a can of cream of chicken excuse me and I'm going to use my emulsion blender to blend that in together and I, I think I'll do that right now actually get this out the way let's go ahead and give you guys a You let me kind of mix it up here first. This would be to give the um, soup or stew or whatever you want to call it uh, some flavor. You know the chicken noodle. If you like mushroom, cream of mushroom, you know, go for it. But since this is chicken, I'm going to use chicken, cream of chicken soup. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get that creamy. If you have a can of potato soup, you know, use that. potato and chicken stock okay okay get all this off from under here and this I'm telling you this emulsion blender it's so easy to clean to use the attachments come have a rack I always keep the motor part plugged in and over here to the side and then the attachments they're on its own little wall um, if you can see over there with all the rest of the attachments so convenient you know you have to drag out all the heavy blenders and stuff like that all right so We'll go ahead and mix this up. Bottom up. Okay, and that will serve as the stock for our stew or gnocchi chicken and gnocchi dumpling. Alright, so our gnocchi, by the way, are in the freezer. Here they are. Again, I have a video that shows you how to make them. Okay. So that's that. So what we're going to do, we have to boil these in salt water. Um, but I am going to fancy it up a bit. And in this pot, I'm going to put in a little bit of oil, olive oil. 
Okay. Now, does anybody know how you tell authentic olive oil from that thick stuff that some groceries uh, try to sell you? Well, I can tell you. I got to keep it covered because I have this annoying fly. I've been chasing it all day. It's one of them young, fast ones, you know? Hard to get. I mean, they don't stay uh, positioned long in any one spot enough for you to get your fly swatter when you see them. And by the time you do all that and get after them, they're gone. Okay, come on, land. Oh, you see? Just two seconds. Well, it was on me and I on my apron and I swatted at it. I don't know if I got it or not. Alright, anyway, my war with the flies. I'll be so happy when autumn comes and they start to die out and go away. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna throw in some chopped up onions. Not much, just a handful. Spoon of fresh garlic. Or rather, a teaspoon. This is a teaspoon. Sorry, I said a tablespoon. I meant a teaspoon. Let me show you the difference. See? This is a teaspoon. This is a tablespoon. If you don't have measuring spoons, that's it. Okay. So a teaspoon of garlic, a handful, which is probably about half a cup of chopped onions, or half an onion, or a quarter of an onion, depending on how much you like onion. Okay. Let that. I'm going to throw in a little bit of Marsala wine. This is just me. Let me bring you over here. Okay, so we're going to stir that around. Put in our salt. I'm going to use uh, coarse kosher salt. About half a, about a teaspoon. And and of course about a again a teaspoon of sofrito. A sofrito, which is my next to last jar. I have an emergency jar. It's a half size jar. I always make that's a use less. That's that's to, uh, the warning to tell me that I need to make some more before I run out. And I have a video on that too on how to make sofrito, Puerto Rican pesto. It's absolutely delicious and a requirement when you're cooking. Puerto Rican food, Island food, Creole. Oh gosh, the smell. All right, this smells absolutely wonderful. That's so frito, really does it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill that with some water. Okay, well, let me just bring the water to it. I'm telling you, I'm old-fashioned. <laughs> I go right to the sink, fill it up, but I'm going to measure it. Okay. 
You start off with two cups of water, tap water. require some cornstarch, a couple of tablespoons. Uh, I'm going to put this up on high. This is pretty a fairly simple recipe. So this is um, basically Puerto Rican style, I guess I'm going to call it, because it has Puerto Rican spices. done in a manner in which a Puerto Rican would do it. Alright. Just washing my uh, attachment to the emulsifier or emulsion blender. Okay, so we're going to let that water get come to a boil and then we'll throw a gnocchi in. And then we'll throw our chicken in. Actually, I think I'm going to throw our chicken in first. That way it can cook. Because milky doesn't take, it doesn't take any time to cook. Once they start floating up on the water, they're done pretty much. So let's go ahead and. Put in pieces of chicken. Okay, give you a good view of what I'm doing here. Okay. One pot meal. I love it. I'm going to make some fresh biscuits with this. And I have a recipe on that also. Uh, two ingredients. All you need is uh, milk and equal amounts of milk and self-rising flour and you're, you're done. You don't add anything else to it. No salt. No nothing. Just that. Uh, or heavy whipping cream, I would think. You can do some of that. Okay, this is what it looks like so far. Doesn't that look good already? So we will be adding some more water to this. I still have it on high. Two more cups of water. Two cups. So it's a total of four cups of water. Okay, put all this stuff in here. Okay, let this come to a boil. As soon as it comes to a boil, we're going to add the gnocchi. If you wanted to put, which I think I'm going to do. Some cilantro. About a teaspoon. Put in some fresh basil. Okay. 
Puerto Rican style, I'm telling you. Before we put in our cream of chicken and potato stock, let's go ahead and let that come to a boil. I'll bring you right back. Okay, we're at a good boil now. Okay, I'm going to take some of this stuff out. going to drop in our gnocchi, okay, try to separate them before you drop them in, flavor. Alright, so we got the nokis in. Give it a couple of minutes. Let's put that up back up to a four. Now again, the way you can tell when the nokis are done is they float to the top. By the time we cook all this, they'll be done. All right, time to throw in our chicken sock, which is a half a can of, or you could put a whole can depending on how much you're making. You know, you gotta gauge that. You gotta gauge that with the amount that you are making in your kitchen. For me, it's gonna be half a can of chicken, shoot, cream of chicken soup, rather, and, um, Two potatoes boiled and blended up in there with the cream of chicken. Then we're just gonna let this come to a low boil or simmering and let it thicken up. Stir, stir, stir. And if you feel you need to thicken it even further, um, depending on how thick you like your chicken and dumplings, some people like it very thick, some people like it a bit soupy. That's it, but some people like it in between very thick and a bit soupy, moderate. And that's about me, so that's where I stand with it. So depending on how you like it or what you're serving it with also. You've got to gauge that on your own. I'm not in your kitchen. <laughs> 
you have to use, you know, your noodles to determine how much you need for you and your family and how, I guess, the majority or everyone likes it, okay? Now, if you have some that like it soupy, you know, like this, just a little, you know, thicker or just like this, then, you know, once it, everything is cooked, take some out, a portion of it out, serve them in their bowls, and then thicken the rest for the rest of the family. Um, or not. I mean, the way I was raised is you ate what was in front of you or you went without, you know, but uh, people don't really do that too much anymore. People kind of cater to their kids these days. I never did, that's for sure. But to each his own. Um, I am going to put in a little bit of about two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. And of course, I use the Four Seas Italian. Um, Grated Parmesan Romano. Alright. To give it a little zing. So I am going to let this simmer. I'm going to put it up to a six. Let it come to a soft boil, and I'm going to do that and let it sit for about 15 minutes and put my timer on. 15, 20 minutes, depends. All right, and I'll bring you guys right back. Okay, one thing I feel that this needs is a little bit of sour cream. I do feel that. Then that's the water from it. About a quarter cup would do. Now, as far as the cheese goes, I'm going to use, uh, like I said, this is going to be a cheesy one. I'm going to use um, uh, cheese and salsa dip. Head of this. Queso con salsa. Cheese and salsa dip. Sauce. Get the rest of this out. And this has a little kick to it. Not, not too bad. So just be mindful. You can get the mild, just plain old cheese dip. Or whatever cheese you want. You want white cheese? Whatever. Make it your own. This is creative cooking. But I'm going to use this because I've had it in the refrigerator and I need to use it before it spoils. And I don't have any recipe I intend on making that would require this other than this. Okay. So. This is why I said wait till everything gets incorporated and, and then decide whether or not you need a thickening agent like either flour and water or, or uh, cornstarch and water. This looks to me like it's going to do just fine. This is like in between a, a soup. It's going to thicken some more. It's in between a soup and a thick sauce. See, I look at the little pieces of carrots. Don't they look cute? 
real small. What I did was I took some um, carrot sticks, you know, the matchsticks kind, and just took a whole bunch and just chopped them. And then I took one celery stick and cut it in three long quarters and um, started dicing them as thin as I can get them. the cilantro in there I see the basil the fresh basil in there oh yeah that's gonna be so good basil so and then I'm going to make I see the onions and some red pimentos in there too there's one so that is basil believe it or not it's a stem from a, a basil. All right, well, all that's left for this is to simmer and cook down. So I'm gonna put the lid on this. Got this on low and let that simmer down other than that that's all that's to this I will be showing a picture of the presentation I'm going to move on to making my biscuits from uh, whipping cream and self-rising heavy whipping cream and self-rising flour cup of this and you can mix this with whole milk too like half half and half um you can use table cream if you want whatever anything that has a lot of butter in it and then uh equal parts of self-rising flour so i'm gonna do a cup of self-rising flour with a cup of heavy whipping cream and i'm gonna make my biscuits that way and i do have a video um just look for it on how to make this. Alright, now the mild cheddar cheese is for the topping on the uh, cheesy chicken and milky dumpling soup. Okay, I will bring you all back or yeah, I'll bring you all back with a plated presentation. Okay folks, so here it is. This is my bowl and no, I can't eat that much. So this is like almost too much for me. Um, but there's the chicken. There's the gnocchi. There's my little carrots and celery. And there's some potato under there, sliced of potato. And here's my biscuit. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's one cup of heavy whipping cream and one cup of self-rising flour. That's it. That's all you need. Isn't that lovely? Takes about 10 minutes, tops. And then about 18 minutes at 400 to bake those. But I have my video. Look for it in my channel, Two Ingredient Biscuits. And um, treat yourself. I'm telling you, they're delicious. Fluffy. Buttery because of the heavy whipping creams. You really don't need anything. Ah, uh, maybe some jam or something. But there it is, folks. Isn't that delicious? That is my cheesy uh, chicken and gnocchi dumpling with potato soup. Or stew. Whatever's clever. But you all enjoy. Make you some like subscribe and press that notification bell turn it on so you could be notified when i upload a new recipe every time i upload a recipe you'll be notified that way you can check it out okay until the next one you all take care of yourselves and one another feast of tabernacles is coming up so god bless you all and i pray that you all have a blessed event 
honoring and worshiping the Lord. All right, in Yeshua's precious name, amen. See you next time.